Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Revenge Story Times for more stories. How fast can happiness slip through your fingers? I found out the hard way. Every promise shattered, every truth I held dear turned into betrayal. From the ashes of a life once loved, I'm building something stronger. Can a heart ever heal after it's been torn apart? I fought through the lies and the pain to reclaim my life. This is my story. I met Laura in my first year of college. She was exactly my type, tall, slim, with chestnut hair. At 5 feet 7 inches, she stood out to me, and at 6 feet 1 inch, built from years on the swim team, I couldn't take my eyes off her. From the moment we locked eyes, it was like everything I ever wanted was right in front of me. Our friends often teased us because they could see the chemistry between us. The first couple of years together were amazing, it was like we were made for each other, the excitement of being together fueling our connection. One time, we were so caught up in each other that we had sex six times in one day. It started early in the morning, went on between classes, after school, and into the night until we finally passed out. As time went on, we still hooked up three times a week, even with the busy college life. But in our last year, with more assignments, it slowed to just the weekends. Then Laura made a huge mistake with Paul, the basketball player from our school. He was all over social media one night with Laura by his side. My phone blew up with messages, pictures of them together, even a video of them going into her room, both smiling. The next day, I confronted her. She was hungover, barely waking up. I showed her the photos, and she admitted everything. She went out with friends, started drinking, and ran into Paul. They got to talking, and before she knew it, they were making out. She didn't even remember how they ended up in bed together. She swore it was a one-time mistake, that she loved me, and begged me to forgive her. Her friends and even mine said it was just a drunken slip-up, and I should move past it. My friends also said she was the hottest girl I'd ever date and that no one else would compare. I was mad at her for almost two weeks, but I eventually forgave her. I missed being close to her. She kept apologizing, and I caved, but I made it clear, one more screw up and we were done. Looking back, the guys who told me to take her back are miserable now. They chose looks over loyalty. The ones who said to let her go are now happily married, no divorces among them. I guess there's truth in choosing loyalty over looks. Except for that one time, Laura was great. After college, I got into programming, and Laura worked as an admin at a big firm. She had to commute almost an hour each way, and I mostly worked from home. We got married by the end of the year and had our first kid soon after. Then came Ben and his sister a year later. Life seemed good, but I was fooling myself. My career was going well, and Laura wanted to make more money, so she got into real estate, selling high-end homes. Because she was tall and attractive, Laura started making more money, but she was also away from home more often, and we grew distant. I always had a gut feeling when things weren't right. I remembered the rough time we had before, so I put a tracker on her phone and a recorder in her purse. Within two days, I heard her with a guy named David. Her phone showed she was at his place, nowhere near her work. It broke my heart, but they weren't saying sweet nothings on the recording, which gave me hope that maybe we could still fix things. When she came home, I made her favorite meal, and the kids were all dressed up. I was extra sweet to her. She seemed happy. I told her I loved her and that we needed to spend more time together. She agreed. I was so relieved, thinking I might win her back. I kept sending her cute pictures of our kids. When I saw her texting David, I texted her, saying how much I loved and missed her. I was thrilled when she cancelled her plans with him on Friday night. I asked my cousin and his wife to watch the kids, and I took Laura out to a fancy dinner, where we ate and danced. That night, we tried to beat our old record in bed. We didn't make it, but it was fun trying. The next day, we took the kids to a water park, had a blast under the sun, and I thought everything would be okay. But then I got hit with a text from Laura to David on Friday morning. It said she was excited to see him and missed him. My world shattered again. I was done listening to her excuses. 
I couldn't let her sweet talk me into believing which parts of our life were real. To me, Laura had already left me and the kids, she just hadn't lost her rights to see them yet. I caught a glimpse of David through the spy app on her phone. I recognized him from her office. My first thought was that he seemed like a jerk, and now I was sure of it. Instead of going to jail for beating him to a pulp, I chose to cut Laura and the drama out of our lives. She had been lying to the kids and me every day, betraying the people she was supposed to love most. I used everything I knew about her double life to my advantage. I kept most of our stuff and made sure I stayed the primary parent for our kids. I'd show the kids and our families how Laura was choosing her affair over us so they wouldn't fall for her tricks. And I was going to make David regret messing with us in a big way. Next was Ben's school band performance. I told Laura, but she wasn't really paying attention. This was becoming normal. But the next day was EMS big recital. I used the app on Laura's phone to change her calendar reminder to the day after. At the school, I made sure she was at some guy's place by checking her phone. I also made sure her phone was on silent. I left her a message asking where she was. An hour later, I sent another message saying she was late. Near the end of the show, she called in a panic, asking if Emma had performed yet. I asked her where she was, but she kept asking about Emma. I lied and said she had just missed her and that I would see her at home. Emma was sad on the way back because her mom wasn't there. I told her that sometimes grown-ups get too busy with work. Emma and Ben looked disappointed, but they took it. Laura often missed the end of family events. When we got home, Laura was there, still in her work clothes but smelling fresh. She was all over Emma, trying to make up for missing the show. Emma acted sad, as kids are good at doing. After a bit, Emma gave her a big hug and told her not to miss the next one. I wondered if Laura felt bad for missing the show or was just scared of being caught cheating. Then, I saw Laura and that guy meeting at a small cafe known for their fried pickles. I ended up talking about fried pickles with my father-in-law, who said he hadn't had a good one in ages. I told him about the place. I booked a table for Friday, the day Laura and David often went to the cafe. I picked up her parents, and we all drove there. Peeking at my phone, I saw Laura was still at work, so I took a longer, scenic route to the restaurant. Soon, Laura's phone showed she was on her way. We got there just a bit after she did. Walking in with her parents, I noticed Laura in the back, cozy next to David in a booth. I called out, asking, booth or table? Out of the blue, Laura looked up fast, her eyes wide, then slid to the other side as if she was pushed. David seemed lost until he saw us coming in. He tried to blend in, hiding a bit. Laura rushed over. Mom! Dad! What brings you here? Her dad, all smiles, said, came to try the famous fried pickles. Laura, a bit too warmly, said, they're great. Why don't you join me and my work friend? We were just there she pointed to the booth where David, looking rather red, waved. The smile on her folks' faces vanished. Her dad stepped back to be by his wife, and her mom, losing her smile, looked at David. We don't want to get in the way of your work meal, her mom said. Laura, way too cheerful, replied, it's fine. We were just grabbing a quick bite before going to show a house. Let's just say it got pretty awkward after that. David shook hands with everyone, and Laura filled the air, talking nonstop. My mother-in-law looked sad at her food the whole meal, and my father-in-law lost his smile when he saw David. He just stared at him, not saying a word the whole time. I tried to make small talk, asking easy questions like, how long have you worked here, and why is a nice guy like you still single? Then I had an idea. You know, Laura has a single sister. You guys should meet. If it clicks, we could become family. Laura's smile was tight. The guy, after a too long pause, said, No thanks, I've got a girlfriend. I was curious. Really? Is she someone we know, or is it a secret? He replied, She's leaving a bad relationship. It's not nice to say who. He had a smug look, only for me. I thought, what a jerk. 
His smugness faded when he saw everyone at the table looking at him, especially Laura. Then our food came out. The in-laws, who usually ate slowly, rushed through their meals. I barely touched my fried pickle. Laura saw and asked if it wasn't good. I said I wasn't hungry and just looked at her. Laura's mom called the waiter over and handed him a $60 bill for our meals. Everyone said thanks, and she rushed to the bathroom. The waiter came back with change, and Laura's dad looked at David like he was something gross on his shoe, then headed to the bathroom without a word. I told Laura and David, sorry to crash your work lunch. I bet you've got big plans and people to trick, I mean sell to. I got up and left for my car. Laura followed me out. Nice to have lunch. We'll talk at home. Your folks will be here soon. I saw Laura's mom and dad rush out, almost running, not even looking at David. Laura saw them leave, looked down, and said, it might be for the best. Her in-laws hugged her quickly and got into my car without a word, I didn't say anything to Laura. The ride home was silent. When we reached their house, I said goodbye. Mom hugged me tight, saying she loved me like the son she never had. Dad gave me a quick hug, a first for him, asking to see the kids soon. They seemed so much older now. It was sad. Laura had lied to them just for some random guy, reminding me of her sister, Sophia. Sophia was out of the picture. She had ruined her marriages by cheating and lying about it. She told awful stories about her second husband, but the truth came out when her parents saw a video of her with another man. This man's family was close to theirs, causing a huge mess. His own marriage ended, and his family left their lifelong church, never speaking to Laura's family again, despite living in the same town. Sophia's parents barely spoke to her. The pain from her actions still hung over the family, a shadow that followed them even now. Laura mentioned Sophia, and her folks cut her off quick, saying never to say her name again. Sophia tried to slip into her family's church one Sunday. When her dad saw her, he stopped the pastor mid-sermon to say, sorry, but we have to go. Not even looking at Sophia, they left by the door near her, who got dirty looks from everyone else. Laura came back that night, excited about a big sale she made with David at lunch, but her folks didn't like her eating out alone with an unmarried man. They told her not to hang out with him, even in a group. Laura apologized and promised not to lunch with him if it upset them. She said not to worry about him, they got the sale. I told Laura I'd sleep in the guest room until she apologized to me and her folks, reminding her about her sister's mess up. Laura was upset but thought I was making a big deal over nothing. I didn't want to be close to her anyway. Then, I put a switch in Laura's and David's cars. I did David's car while he was busy with my wife, I also messed up a car part to make his engine light come on, making it hard for mechanics. We had different tasks for the day, Ben had soccer, and Emma had band. That's when Laura wanted to see David. I heard everything on her phone during Ben's game. I made sure Laura's car wouldn't start. Knock, knock. What's up, babe? Back so soon? My car won't start. Let's see. Fifteen minutes later, can't tell what's wrong. Your car should start. Battery looks fine. Need me to drive you home? No way. After that mess at the diner, if my husband saw you drop me off, we'd be in deep trouble. Just call a tow truck. I need to pick up Emma for her band thing across town. Why not let your guy do it? He's at Ben's soccer match. We planned I'd take Emma. You can use my car again. That diner mess. Yeah, fine. Take me to a car rental, and I'll get a tow truck for my car. Make sure you're here when the tow guy shows. Give him $60 to say it was found at our work. Laura's phone beeped. Oh no. Hey love, are you on your way to get Emma? My car is acting up, battery I think. Need me to come and give it a jump? No, that's okay. I've called a tow, and I'll just rent a car so Emma isn't late. Okay, call if you need me. She ended the call.
Let's head out now. Take me to the Enterprise near our job. But there's a Hertz closer. No way. Can't have a rental bill from a place far from work, especially by your apartment, right? Sadly, Laura was too late for Emma. Luckily, Emma called in a panic, so I got one of our dad friends to bring Ben home later. After he said yes, I rushed Emma to her show just in time. Back home, Ben was in his room, and Laura was there, saying sorry to Emma again, still in her work gear but smelling fresh. Emma, so sorry. The car broke down. Got a rental, but your dad had already got you. It's okay, mom. He made it just on time. Thanks to dad again. You missed my show. I hope work is worth it, she said as she ran to her room. Laura told me it wasn't her fault her car broke down. I called your job after lunch. They said you left early. You had over two hours to pick up Emma. What went wrong? Laura froze for a few seconds. Then she said she had some errands and thought she had enough time. She didn't know her car would break, I looked at Laura. She squirmed under my stare. She looked back at me. What errands? You didn't say. You never told me. I stared at her hard. Just stuff, she said. Things I needed to do. I hope that stuff was worth more than your daughter's heart. You're in deep trouble for this. Then I went upstairs to sleep alone. At least I got my answer, Laura didn't care about missing our kids' big moments. Her affair was all she thought about. She just didn't want to get caught. If she cared, she would have skipped her plans. Instead, she left work early under a fake reason to have more time for her affair. Next time, it will be worse. The car shop found nothing wrong with Laura's car. Emma got smart when she found out. Hey, Mom, you said you'd drive me and my friends to the mall this Saturday. Can you tell us now if you'll bail? We don't want to get stuck because of your car. Ben laughed from the other room, yelling, Nice one, Emma. The kids felt left out by their mom. After the big fight, Laura came to me to complain and wanted me to tell the kids to be nice to her. Maybe you'll think about it, but first I'm waiting for your apology while I sit in the guest room. She didn't see the funny side of that, got mad, and said I was being hard-headed for staying in the guest room. On Saturday, I was the driver for Emma and her pals to the mall. Laura said she had work stuff. She didn't head to some guy's place or a hotel, but her car did end up at a house for a few hours. I checked it out, the place was for sale, but who was with her? When we all got back, Emma made a big point to thank me right in front of her mom for the rides. Then Emma just chatted with her friend and didn't answer Laura. Laura looked like she wanted to say something to me, but I just laughed, grabbed my drink, and went to my office, locking it. Laura was still in work clothes but smelled fresh, like she had showered. Looks like she had a secret visit to a house she was selling. I just hope she changed the sheets after, but I kind of doubt it. Ben's birthday was coming. We planned to rent six lanes at a bowling alley for his friends and us to have a good time. It took a bit, but we found an alley free on a Friday night. How lucky. When I told Laura, she looked nervous. Fridays must be bad for her. I said I'd get the kids and some others for the party. I needed her to grab the cake and candles. We'd light the candles, eat pizza, and watch Ben open gifts. Then, it would be bowling time. The week before Ben's party, I had to mess with David's car a few times to keep them from meeting up. That week, they chose Tuesday for lunch, so I had to mess up his car for good, forcing him to take it to the shop. They found nothing wrong, and he got it back that same day. I hoped this would make him mad and ready for Friday. I was glad when I saw Laura's text on Friday morning, can't wait to see you after lunch. Her phone showed she was heading to his place early enough to have some fun, grab the cake, and get to the party on time. This gave me enough time to grab Laura's gift, enjoy myself, pick up the kids, and head to the park party. I picked up a rented car for this special day. It needed a big trunk, just in case Laura's gift opened up inside. 
After making sure Laura's phone was left at his place, I carried my bag and Laura's gift to David's door. There, I placed the pet cage, covered in black cloth, at his front door. I lifted the cage door up, leaving only David's door in front. I grabbed my new tool, the door ram, swung it a few times for practice, then hit the door hard with a loud bang. Next, I pulled out my taser, gave the metal cage a quick zap, and out jumped a very mad raccoon. I quickly shut the door just as the raccoon turned to attack. I ran back to my rented car. Driving away, I listened in on Laura's phone. I heard screams and chaos, a good sign. It meant the raccoon got him. I heard David tell my wife to call the cops, so I locked her phone. She'd think she messed up the password in her panic. From the sounds, he had to leave his room to get his phone. From the yelling, the raccoon went wild, another win. David finally got the cops on the line, told them a wild animal was in his place, and he needed backup. About 15 minutes later, the cops showed up, spotted signs of a break-in, and moved in, guns ready. The raccoon struck first. I heard both cops yell in panic before they managed to shut the front door. It took a bit for animal control to get there then, caught and took away the raccoon. After they left, two stinky cops sat across from two stinky folks, Laura and David. Two more cops came to help, but one whiff of the place, and they bailed. Who lives here? David answered, yeah, that's me. And you, the cop asked. Here's my driver's license. You live here? No, just visiting. Got ID? Do we have to do this now? Look, lady, I just got hit by a raccoon and have had a rough day. I'm not in the mood for games. Give it here. Fine. Here. So, how do you two know each other? We work together. And why are you here? After some back and forth on their radios to check Laura and David's details, the cop asked, So, what's with the raccoon? David started to reply, but Laura jumped in. It was a gift for me. You got your boyfriend a full-grown raccoon as a gift? He's not my boyfriend. Laura snapped. Enough, lady. Boyfriend, girlfriend, co-worker, whatever. Why a full-grown raccoon? Well, I did and I didn't. I got the raccoon, but it was meant to be small and trained so it wouldn't attack. David said he liked raccoons and wanted one as a pet, so I surprised him. It wasn't meant to be big. They dropped it off, and when David opened the cage, out it came and attacked him. The cop, clearly not buying it but also tired of the drama, said, a raccoon must have cost a lot. Kind of, but it was okay, Laura tried to downplay it. Do you always buy expensive pets for work friends without your husband knowing, or just for your boyfriend, the cop asked. Laura stayed quiet. It meant boyfriend. David jumped in, I messed it up yesterday and couldn't fix it yet. They must have all been silent for a minute. Then the cop spoke up, okay, both of you, I can tell you're both lying, but I can't stand the smell and need to leave. The only reason you and your man are off the hook is that you both stink more than me or my buddy, and I won't let you stink up my car. So they left and slammed the door. David, what was that about? Laura asked. Always smart. We couldn't say that someone kicked your door and put a raccoon in your place. Why not? Because then they'd ask my husband if he did it. He knows, and if he didn't, they'd have to tell him I was here. Laura, be honest. David, how many other girls are you with? None, he said, offended. When was the last time with someone else? A month ago, he admitted softly. Laura, she yelled. You jerk. For how long? Eight months, he answered. Even louder, Laura shouted, you've been with him the whole time you were with me? And another half a year back too? David whispered, did their men find out? You think they were married? I know what you're like now. Did they? Yes. Did they know it was you? Not sure. Great, now I'm sure I was right to lie to the cops. Probably one of the other wives after revenge. 
Either way, we'll find out if my husband did it. If he did, I'm going to be so mad. My wife's phone rang. Hi, Laura, got the cake yet? I asked. I knew she could hear the sound of bowling pins in the background. Oops, I got held up at work. I'm on my way now. Laura, don't let Ben down too. I'm leaving now, no worries. Laura hung up. David! Laura exclaimed. Oh no, Ben's birthday. I need that cake. Next, I heard Laura shower, get dressed, and rush out. Her car's map showed she was driving to the store. Her car stopped working after her fourth try to start it, but then it started. It stopped three more times on her way, but it started back up each time. She was going to be very late to Ben's party. At the store, Laura apologized, telling the bakery folk she hit a raccoon. They quickly helped her out. Laura made it to the bowling place at the end, holding the cake. We all held our noses and gagged. After a quick talk, Ben begged his mom to just go home. On the way back, Ben asked, why does mom miss my and Emma's events? I tell him, she's trying her best for us, and it's tough to be everywhere at once. But you're always there for Emma and me, and you make more money, he replied. Well, I got more free hours, so I can hang with my two favorite raccoons. Not funny, Dad. It will be when you tell your friends tomorrow. Even the birthday cake smells, so we tossed it. Birthday stinky cake. They both laughed. I was happy to sleep in the other room that night. Days later, after Laura took many tomato juice baths, I saw her sniffing my car seats. It was funny seeing my wife, she looked like a mouse sniffing for cheese. When she walked back into the house, I quietly followed her upstairs to our main bedroom's closet. Hiding around the corner, I used my phone to film her. She dropped to the floor and began sniffing my shoes. I never asked why her car didn't smell of raccoon even two weeks later. I told everyone I needed to buy some stuff from the hardware store. After asking if anyone wanted to join and hearing their no s, I went out alone. But I went straight to David's place. His car was there, that was good. I knocked, and when he opened the door, I said, can I come in? I'm Laura's husband. His face turned white, but I went in and sat at his kitchen table, insisting he sit too. The place smelled of fresh paint and faintly of raccoon. Everything looked new. I know about you and my wife, Laura, for the past six months, I said. Man, I don't know what you heard, but it's all not true. We're just friends, he replied. I told him I had pictures and a video of their meetings. He played dumb, but I was straightforward. I know you're with my wife, and I have proof. I don't care about you. What matters is what my wife does. So here's my offer, instead of paying a detective, I'm offering you the money. He looked confused. You want me to film me and your wife together, and you'll pay me $2,500? He was trying to grasp the situation. He glanced at his new stuff. $2,000 just for a video of me and your wife? You serious? Yes, I said. Two grand for a video that clearly shows it's her. I need a note from you saying you made the video and you're okay with me buying it. If you have all this proof, why do you need the video? I need more power in a divorce fight. Wow, cheating like that would be really mean. You mean like how she's playing me and the kids? Yeah, like that. Two thousand dollar bucks and I want you to spill the beans to the other two men. Hope they've been lied to by their wives just like me. To sweeten the deal, they'll even pay for a secret spot a few towns away. You can have your fun with her at the hotel spa all day on Saturday. David just looked at me, thinking hard. Dude, you're really cold. Bump it to $3,000, and we have a deal. Done. Not a word to Laura, of course. I'll book the spa and hotel in your name. It'll be for next Saturday and the following Tuesday night. They'll call you to plan when to get the video. Cash payment, all clear? Yes. All right. Be sure her face is easy to see in the clips. 
I'll send over the permission note later today. Talk to you the Tuesday after next. I left his place and kept on with my shopping. On Friday night, I told Laura, babe, forgot to say I have a meeting this Saturday a bit away. Is that okay? No worries, seems like a quiet weekend then. Enjoy your meeting. Tuesday night, I called David to let him know I'd pick him up in front of his building. He wondered why, and I said I didn't want to be on any videos. Picked him up, told him to zip it, and drove to a quiet rest stop off the highway. Made him get out and checked him with a metal detector. All clear. He got back in the car. Got what I need? Yeah, here, and he gave me a USB stick. I pulled my laptop from the back and plugged in the USB. The camera must have been on the dresser by the bed. The bed was empty. Then, David laid down on it, and Laura came in and got between his legs to do stuff with her chest chest I could see Laura's face well. Next, the camera showed the bed from the side. Laura, with no clothes, got on the bed. She said she loves it from behind, feels great. Then there was a video of them in different ways. I told David, perfect, just what I wanted. Got the yes paper? I asked. David took out an envelope and gave it to me. It had the right date and name on it. I took a photo and sent it to myself. I gave David an envelope from my car. He looked happy, counting the money twice. When I left him at his house, he said, if you want more videos, just say. I had a blast earning cash. Tuesday, I told my cousin and his wife the story, showed them a bit of the video, also some photos, and a list of dates Laura was with David, marked in yellow, the time she missed family stuff for David, too. To her parents, I showed a cleanup photo from the video, just heads and legs, nothing graphic. I did not want to hurt them. I didn't want Laura to lie to them, either. I asked, did you know Laura loves shoes so much? They did not. The video of her with my shoes was next. She sniffed every pair. This seemed to upset them the most. Maybe they could get past the cheating, but the shoe thing was weird. I said, she always showered after the shoe thing. A few days passed, and I saw all the shoes were gone from their house, and their bedroom door was always shut. I showed my parents the video of the shoe sniffing. Dad laughed a lot at it. I told everyone to wait until Friday to talk to Laura. While she was out with her boyfriend, I sat the kids down to tell them what was going on. Mom has a boyfriend, and I'm not sure she loves me still. They were shocked and asked if we were going to split up. I said, I'll talk to your mom when she gets back from her boyfriend's. They both shouted, she's at his place now? I said yes and showed them her car's location on my phone at her boyfriend's. Emma said, is this why mom misses time with me and Ben? I showed them a list of when their mom met with him and the family time she missed. I wanted them to see how little they seemed to matter to their mom. I also showed them the tracker for the times their mom missed Emma's show and Ben's birthday. They began to cry when they saw when their mom left on Ben's birthday. They cried more when they saw the time she left and then finally showed up. That rotten person, I said. I told them the key thing was that I loved them, that this was a problem between their mother and me, and we would try our best to stay together as a family. After a lot of crying, hugging, and talking, we heard the front door. Laura came in. Seeing our faces, she looked worried and asked, what's wrong? Kids, go to your rooms. Your mom and I need to talk. They hugged me, gave their mom a mad look, and went to their rooms. When I heard their doors close, I asked Laura to sit. What's up, Laura? I know about the side thing. Oh no, that's not right. I never go behind your back. Why'd you even think that? Laura's eyes got all wet. If you want, tell me the real deal, then we're done talking. Someone got it wrong. They saw something that wasn't real. Okay, Laura. We're done for today. Take the rest of the day to think about how you're hurting us. We'll talk more tomorrow. Don't talk to me or the kids till we fix this. I left the room and went to another. 
Laura kept following, saying I got it wrong, until I closed the door. She stopped talking. Then she tried to talk to Emma through her door, real quiet. Emma, what did dad say? This is all mixed up. Please open up so we can talk. Emma didn't say a word but she texted me, Dad, can you make her leave? I tried, but she said, I got it wrong about her cheating, so no point talking if she lies. Maybe you messed up, Emma said. I've got pics of them together without clothes, I replied. I opened my door and saw Laura leave. Leave the kids out till we sort this. You're making it tough for them. But I want to know what you told them. I told them you have another guy. That's it. It's between us till we figure it out. Now, please leave the kids be. Laura went to her room, sad. I heard her cry all night. The next day, Friday, I waited for Laura. The kids were gone, they didn't want to be near this mess. Laura, come sit. She did. Think about how you're messing up the family. She nodded, yes. Can we talk true about what's going on? She nodded, yes. So, what's your side? It's all a big mix-up. Yeah, I've been closer to someone else, but it's just talking. We've had lunch a few times, even when you said not to. We work together, can't help it. I've shared some feelings with him, that's it. Trust me, love, it's only you for me. Well, if lying is how you tackle this mess, we're done talking. We'll talk again Saturday at 9 o'clock in the morning. The kids will stay with your folks tonight and Friday. We'll talk Saturday. Think about what this does to us all. I left for my room. Laura didn't say a word or follow. Come Saturday at 9 o'clock, I had breakfast with the kids at Laura's folks. Got home and saw Laura at the kitchen table. I asked, ready to talk true about everything? Laura nodded, yes. You told my folks, yours, and your cousin and his wife? Yes. Why would you do that? I've always been proud of you, but now all the sneaking around, the lies to me, the kids, our folks. Why? It looks so easy to see through you. But it was just a couple of kisses, that's it. And now everyone's against me. Since you won't be straight with me, we're done here. The kids will stay with the grandparents for now. They'll sleep in the spare room, and I'll keep working from home. We'll talk on Tuesday after work. Think about what you're doing to us. That night, after dinner with my folks and the kids, I got up, left, and drove off. Laura was in the living room. Can we talk? Tuesday, I said, then went to sleep. Some of Laura's friends texted me, asking me to forgive her. They said it was a small mistake. I video chatted with them, told them how long Laura had been cheating, and showed them a clear photo and a short clip of her with another man. They said sorry and hung up fast. We never heard from them again. I guess Laura wasn't fully honest with her friends. Also, it seems like married women who cheat tend to do it a lot, especially if they look like Laura. On Tuesday night, Laura came home. I left my home office and saw her at the kitchen table. She brought pasta from our favorite place. A plate was ready for me. Laura looked really tired, with dark circles under her eyes, days of figuring out what lies to tell her friends and family so they wouldn't find out she's a really bad person. I said in a sad voice, no one will talk to me. Lying does that. They think I am a monster. Well, Laura, you've shown that a part of you is, I said. They said you showed them a photo and video of me. Can I see it? My friend said you showed it to them too. I smiled, I love it when things go as planned. Yes, if it helps us talk. Just so you know, I haven't let any copies get out. I don't want our family laughed at because of what you did. I showed her the clear photo and the video. I love you so much. Did you really love me that much if you were with someone else? I never had love for him. Marriage should be easy. We share duties, trust, and fun. 
I did it all, all the jobs, all the trust, all for fun with you, but you left me with most bills, most home duties, all the hurt of trust, while you had fun around town. I looked at her hard. You took my love while giving yours away. How long have you known? Seven months, she said in a low voice. Seven months? Why did you wait? At first, I hoped it was just one mistake and that you'd tell me the truth on your own, because you kept saying you love me. I'm sorry. How can I trust you now? Because I do love you, and I'm telling the truth now. Is this the truth, like the last three times you said you didn't cheat? After sitting quietly for a bit, me looking at her, and her at her food, I asked, Laura, how can we fix this? I took an envelope from the home office and put it in front of Laura. This is a deal for after. Sign it, and I might think about us again. You, me, and the kids need help too to make it work. I don't want to sign that. Okay, then we're done. To me, it seems like you just want to leave without losing money. What do I get if I sign this? If we split, I get half of everything. If I cheat, it's back to half. If you cheat, I get 85% and I get the kids. Get a lawyer to check it and sign it. It'll only stay if I'm sure you're ready to give up something in money. On a Saturday morning, as I was about to head out, Laura said, won't you have some food? I got what you love the most. After all the wrongs and lies from her, should I? I expect poison on my plate, I said. She cried a lot. Just sign the papers so you can win back a bit of my trust. The next day, I went to see Laura's boss while she was gone. I had a meeting set with the boss lady. She looked like she'd been there for years. Her man owned the place but no longer came by. From the looks I got, it was clear Laura had spread false tales. How can I help you, she asked, clearly not happy to see me. It looks like there's a wrong idea that I'm the villain in my marriage, I said. Still, she replied, that sounds like it's your personal issue, not our business here. If that's all, I'm busy and need you to leave, or we'll call the cops. I then said, actually, it does relate to this place, because my wife and a certain David here are having an affair. She didn't like my harsh words. Got any proof, she asked. Yes, I replied. Here's a photo of my wife and her co-worker. I also have lots of voice clips where they say they were meant to be working but were fooling around instead. I played a couple of the clips. She looked upset. So, my wife will be fired right away? I asked. Yes, and David too. Sadly, you can't fire him. I had the okay to record my wife but not him. I don't want to end up in court over lies, and I doubt you want that trouble. Thanks for the info, she said with slight ease in her tone. She almost smiled. Can I keep the photo? No, I don't want the picture shared in making folks sick out of nosiness. My family paid enough. Laura came back home in tears that day. She lost her job and got no good words from them. She wanted to talk, but all I said was, Saturday, before I shut myself in my room. Come Saturday morning, Laura was at the kitchen table. Did you really have to get me fired when you knew? I found out about you cheating. You should have left your job to avoid that jerk. I just did what was best for you since you lost your way. What I wanted was for you to feel the pinch and agree to sign the papers. Nope. We could have talked first. Sorry, I thought we agreed we're not checking in before making big decisions that hit us or the kids. Then she asked, did you sign the post yet? Yes. She handed me the envelope. I checked it. It was signed and dated. I sent a copy to my lawyer and put the original in my safe. Then I laid out new house rules. She behaves, and we start going to therapy. I'd also tell the family we're working on our marriage. Deep down, I knew it was a lost cause. I didn't even bother booking any therapy sessions. For the next 30 days, she played the part well, kind and caring. She even put a small camera in my office to watch what I typed and saw on my screen. But I caught her on my secret office camera, which I only checked from my car outside the house. 
On the next Saturday morning, I walked into the kitchen to find Laura with coffee, looking very pleased with herself. We said hi. I grabbed my coffee and sat across from her. Where are the kids? I asked. Over at my parents. Why? We haven't been close in a while, and I thought maybe this morning could be different. Eight months. Yes, eight months. Months? Really? What do you mean, she asked. That's how long it's been since we were close. No way, it's not been that long. You're mistaken. I get how you might mix things up with all the messing around, but trust me, it's been eight months for me. I'm not wrong, Laura. Well, we could fix that. Laura gave me a smile and tried to stand up, but I told her to sit. Laura, I haven't forgotten what you did or said, and I can't shake those images from my head. It's not going to happen. Fine, then be stubborn. I try to be nice. I've done everything you wanted, and you and the kids still push me away. I want you all to start showing me respect from now on. Is this really how you're choosing to handle this, Laura? Yes, actually. I hate being forced into this spot with your nasty videos, and I've taken care of it. I got rid of all your copies. You slipped up by telling me you had backups. I even wiped your cloud and broke your little drive. I've been watching. You're so easy to read. I'm done being the outsider in my own home, and I'll be staying with my sister until you treat me right. You've got no dirt on me now. I found a new job, and I'll look after myself. I'll fetch the kids from school daily, and we'll eat at my place without you until you treat me better. Laura stood and walked to the door. Her sister came from the dining room, and they both left the house. For two months, Laura talked to her parents and the kids. She said, I never had any videos. She claimed the one picture was messed with because I put Laura's and David's faces on it. She told the kids and her folks, if he has proof, then let him show it. But Laura had cleared it all. The kids were torn. Laura's parents wanted to side with her. I saw doubt in my own folks' eyes, not that they didn't trust me, but that the kids might not. My cousin and his wife saw the clips, they were all for me. Now I felt like the odd one out. I had to meet David to plan another video. This time, I went all in. I got a room by the sea in Florida. I paid for three guys who looked good, thinking if one didn't show, I'd have backups. Three might be too much, but I wanted to be sure. I bought tickets for Laura and David, first class. I threw in five grand for David for the clip. I also said it had to be on the suites outside part. Funny thing though, David said Laura was playing hard. David wanted a fancy dinner paid for. He was asking for more cash. I listened while they ate. They had Sophia with them. Laura and Sophia were keen to meet David's pals. I ended up buying another top ticket for Sophia. Two weeks later, I was next to David in my car, watching the new video. It starts with Laura, Sophia, David, and the three guys walking outside. They all looked hot and puffy. Sophia asks how Laura and David met. Sophia goes, I've been covering for my boss for ages when she's out on Fridays. I also covered for David a while when she was with him. Someone spilled to her man about her and David, so she had to stop. I asked if David was any good. She said he had a big tool. She kept covering for me on Fridays. No shock, the boss lady was glad to not let David go. With Laura gone, she was aiming for more time with David. One guy threw his small tool into the crowd, and everyone laughed except one dude. They all sat in cozy chairs, sipping drinks. After a while, that guy got bold and started with Sophia. He was at it for 15 minutes, then he walked into the hotel room, came out quickly, and handed out little blue pills to the other three. Fifteen minutes later, all four were ready to go. They sure had fun with Adrian in that room. Everything went as I asked for the clip. Laura wore the tennis skirt I'd given her last birthday. I felt a bit sick watching my gift go to waste on her. 
The clip ends with her relaxing in the suite's outside part. One of the guys says, let's switch it up. Sophia asks, who gets to go first? The clip went on for 10 more minutes. Laura got out of bed and was about to ask to stop when the camera shut off. Laura threw on her clothes, took a shower, and said she had to leave. The clip ends. I handed the big money to David. He said thanks and got out of my car. I gave the drive to my lawyer the next day. He was amazed by the work I had. He said, you've got to take the time to plan, or your family will break into bits and leave you with no one. I took time to figure out the best way to deal with this mess. In the end, Laura kept seeing David for a bit longer before I had enough and filed for divorce. I kept it short and straight. I got my lawyer to throw everything at Laura, aiming to leave her with just the basics and her car. It worked out. I got the house in full custody of the kids. Laura's parents moved out of our town, heartbroken by their daughter's choices. My cousin's wife helped with the kids. I found a nice, quiet lady who loves the kids and me. Now I see what Laura never did, a real family built on loyalty and love is priceless. Thank you for watching this intense story of betrayal, deceit, and ultimately resilience. What would you do if you were in the same situation? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more shocking stories. We'll see you in the next one.